Father Ernie. There's a good lad. George, I thought perhaps you'd decide to come to church as it's been Sunday. Oh, no, my dear, I, I think I'll look after the house. By the way, you must tell Ernest not to stare at people. It almost puts me out in what strangers must think I cannot imagine. I don't mean to stare, Father. I find people interesting. Not at your age. We must hurry. Look at the time. You carry the bird, Ernie. Yes, Father. lost his false teeth. Half the choir's on the floor looking for them. Ernest, remember where you are. What can you expect with parents like that? Ernest, you have disgraced your mother. chap I always thought. But you never can tell, can you? Never know which way young people are going nowadays. I thought it was simply killing, my dear. Whatever made the boy say it, I could have died. Thank you. I'm so glad you did this today. It was a good night, sir. Oh, it was just for my dear you found this. But my dear, to say it out loud like that. Shh, the vicar's wife. Oh, Mrs. Gimble, we were just talking about young Ernie's tart. Well, you must have had quite a shock until you realized he was making the whole thing up. Shocking, Mrs. Lush, and inexcusable. But between ourselves, 
My husband has been complaining that a slight accident to his dentures may make him late. The poor dear vicar. And they really were on their hands and knees looking for them? Naturally. But two blacks don't make a white, Miss Manister. since you are very much mistaken. Your father is not fooling. Your mother's been so upset that she's had to go upstairs. And I want an explanation. Well, I happened to see through the wall into the vestry, where Mr. Gimble and the choir were searching for the false teeth. And as mother was worried about the service being late, I told her what was happening. But even if it was happening, which I refuse to believe... Oh, but it was, I saw it. Do not interrupt your father. I was saying it did not happen and you did not see it. But even if it was happening and you did see it, not through a wall, of course. I did see it through a wall. Oh, silence, Ernest. You have disgraced your mother by talking aloud in church about false teeth. Were it not for lunch, I should punish you now. If your school, which is costing me good money, doesn't teach you manners, it seems to me you had better start earning a living. There is no time for fooling in the school of life. What shall I work as, Father? Mr. Quayle would be willing to give you a start in his office. I discussed it with him not long after your bad report from school. Mr. Quayle would be willing to take you out of consideration for your mother and me. And now I have a good mind to let you go. In the meantime, your mother isn't down and lunch is late. Father, if Mr. Quayle will take me, I'm willing to start at once. We'll talk about that after lunch. Where is lunch? Mother's in the kitchen giving Annie a talking to. Annie has let the roast fall on the floor and I believe she's refusing to pick it up again. Either you are a liar, Ernest, or something very serious has happened to you. No, oh, don't answer back. Father, I saw. Silence, then. Now I want you to take back every word you've said. You know it can't be true. You know you did it to draw attention to yourself. You know your sight is quite normal and you are being stupid and disrespectful when you talk about seeing through walls. Now take it back, Ernie, and then we'll go into lunch. George! George! The roast has been on the floor. Mm. I've given her notice, of course. Just as I said. This is serious, Doris. More serious than I have been led to suppose. Well, nobody led you to suppose that Annie would be impregnant and drop the roast, that I should give her notice. For God's sakes, let's have something to eat. We can't face this on empty stomach. George! Please remember where you are. I see no necessity to face anything. Annie may be under notice, but she's dishing up the roast as if nothing has happened. As if nothing had happened? When you know all, Doris, you will realize that... What? That all is not gold that glitters. Come to dinner.
Yes, Father. Do your carpentry if you love me, but don't go out on your bicycle. and they can be cured. But don't you see, Doctor? If it goes on, where will it end? Where indeed, Mrs. Todd? Leave the boy to me. Come along, please. Hello, Doctor. Hello, boy. I expect you know me. Yes, I seem to have seen you somewhere. Well, that's good, then. 
I'm glad you know the room. It's a splendid room for light, isn't it? For discovering things. For seeing through things. So you see through walls, Ernest? Yes, Doctor. Ever since church time yesterday. Do you like it? Seeing through walls? Oh, it's not bad at all. It's interesting, you know. I see so much more. Of course. You see the truth. I suppose it does happen to people sometimes. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, is there, Doctor? It seems to be upsetting my parents terribly. It would. Your mother brought you to me to be cured. Is it as serious as that, Doctor? No, it's not serious at all, Ernest. And I will cure you. You're quite certain you see through walls? Oh, yes, I do it whenever I want to. Now look behind you and tell me what your mother is doing in the waiting room. She's trying to fold up the National Geographic that I was looking at while I was waiting. But she can't do it, it's too thick. <laughs> She's now putting it in her shopping bag. Splendid, Ernest, splendid. Ernest, you're probably not familiar with the truth. The truth is incompatible with your present surroundings. Now, don't try to answer me. Ernest, your curiosity has led you to seek a truth with which you are not from day to day familiar. Well, that's quite admirable. I have no intention of curing you. You're incurable. But you just said. Let's make a pact, you and I. Ernst, you will promise me here and now never to mention seeing through a wall to your father or mother. Never to mention it, indeed, to anyone in Steeple. But that would be a lie. A lie. In defense of truth. The fact is, Ernest, even if you did mention it, no one would believe you. Nowadays, people are educated out of believing in things that don't happen. That's deplorable, because a wise man will tell you that things don't happen as often as they do happen. I don't see through walls. More often than I do see through walls, come to think of it. Bravo, my boy. Well, now for a test. Your mother will want to know if you are cured. We understand each other. Good boy. You may come in now, Mrs. Tarts. I ex expect you would like Ernie to wait outside while we talk, Doctor. There's nothing to worry about, I assure you, Mrs. Tarts. There is nothing that cannot be discussed here and now. An adjustment of an important faculty is all I find it prevalent in juvenile minds. I have adjusted it. Are you sure, Dr. Rupel? Isn't it rather quick? Quick, my dear lady. It's science. You do not study science, which is knowledge I do. The matter of looking through walls is scientific. Let us show you, Ernest. Tell us now, you've been looking at the wall of the waiting room. What did you see your mother doing? No, really, Dr. Rupel, that was hardly... A demonstration, Mrs. Tart. Demonstration. Demonstration. And it's my boy. What did you see? I saw nothing. I looked at the wall and I saw nothing. Oh. Oh, Ernie. You saw nothing. You saw the wall. You good little boy. <laughs> what were you doing, Mrs. Todd? Oh, well. I was too agitated. Really, I can't remember what I was doing. But if the boy's better, I... I shall never know how to thank you, Doctor. I, uh, hope it won't be too much, will it? The price of truth, Mrs. Tarch, is experience. Your son's case has interested me so much, I shall forego the fee. Of course, Dr. Rupel. You hear that, Ernie? The doctor finds you interesting. And he returns the interest, I'm flat to say. Well, Ernest, why don't you take one of the National Geographics in the waiting room home with you?
Take your mind off this tiresome consultation. understand it from the beginning. He tried it out on the spot. He asked Ernest if he'd seen into the waiting room where I was. Ernest had seen nothing. And it's a very thin wall, I happen to notice. Just another waste of money then, I suppose. The druggist might have put up a bottle or something which would have done as well. It hasn't cost us a thing, George. Just shows what a clever man that Dr. Rupel is. He was so interested in Ernie's case that I managed to get him to forego his fee. What do you think of that, dear? I hear this uh, Dr. Rupel has put an end to all the nonsense. Oh, yes. He's cured the nonsense. Yes, poor lad. Some more meat, Ernie. No, thank you, Father. I want to save room for dessert. <laughs> 